Okay, we are going to create this worn and torn text effect um, in Photoshop. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open Photoshop uh, in our uh, document window here, a new document window. We're going to go to Create New, and they're having us create a uh, custom uh, document um, and make sure that is set in pixels, as you can see here. So it's going to be 640 in width, 480 in height, and the landscape orientation, which is obviously wider than it is taller. The resolution is 72 pixels per inch. And then the color mode is always uh, RGB. Make sure that artboards is not clicked, OK? Background color white. And we're going to hit Create. And right there, we have our, our document there. Um, first things first is we're going to make sure that we reset our essentials so that our layers are showing and click on them. And we're going to unclick the background. OK, so first thing we're going to do also is fill the background. Um, we're going to hit. Control or Command I to invert the background. Okay, it's going to invert whatever color it was, and it was white. So that is the first thing we're going to do is create a black background. Okay, now we're being introduced now to the text tool, and um, you can type any word you want. Um, I'm going to type fear like they did. So I'm going to select that text tool. I'm going to pick the horizontal text tool. And I'm just going to click anywhere here in the middle of the. Um, the document. Now it's really important that when you click on your text tool, you'll see this little anchor point here and the blinking text. It does click a um, kind of a sample text there. That's very simple. You just select it and you can erase it. Um, but we have to make sure first when we go to the top here, we make sure that um, we're using impact, okay, impact regular, okay, for the font. And we're going to select the font color. It's right here on the top of that options bar. We're going to make sure that we select white. Click on that, hit OK, and we're going to type in the word fear. Okay, now hit the check bar. Okay, it's just like transformation mode where you hit the check to agree to that. Now it's really relatively small here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in transformation mode. We're going to go to edit and transform and scale. Okay, and we're going to drag that word out really big like that. Obviously, if you pick a different uh, word, um, you're going to have, it's going to look a little smaller and make sure that you center it. See how those crosshairs, those purple crosshairs line up, okay, with the transformation mode. And then we're going to hit the check, okay. Um, nice and big, nice, big, bold font. You can pick any font you want. I suggest using the impact like they do. Uh, it is the most successful um, version of it. Um, also, let's take a look at that layers panel. Look at that text layer. It has a big T in that thumbnail. It has a nice big T there. And you can see this is a vector file, okay? Text is vector. You can see those nice smooth edges. And I made it really large, and it didn't lose any of its resolution. It didn't lose. It didn't become pixelated because it is a vector file. And it's real important to know that because now we need to rasterize this file. Before we can do any of this effect, we need to rasterize. We need to convert it to pixels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click that text layer, and I'm just going to go to Rasterize Type, and you'll see what happens. Look at that. The layer, right, that layer converted to a pixel layer because now you can see the transparent uh, background and then the word fear. It's hard to see because it's white. But that is a rasterized layer, OK? Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create those cracks. And we have to create a crack in every letter. Um, and by doing that and separate them uh, and kind of make them look like they've broken apart, OK? So what we're going to do is we're going to select the polygonal lasso tool, which is the third tool down. It's polygonal. And the great thing about the polygonal lasso tool is it creates anchor points. So I'm going to go ahead and click, kind of make a jagged line here. So it looks like it's broken. And I'm going to go all the way right, like this, all the way around. And I'm going to rejoin it here. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to create a duplicate. OK, I'm going to create a duplicate of this. Um, the fear, I'm going to put it on a new layer. OK, and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to click Control Shift. J, how I'm going to do that is
Oh yeah, it was right. Okay. So what I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna create a duplicate of this, but I'm gonna do Control Shift J, and it creates a new layer with just the opposite. So I didn't actually duplicate the entire layer. If you're on the PC, it's Control Shift J, and you'll see I created a new layer here. Okay. And if I hide that layer, look at that, it's missing the top. So it's not uh, a duplicate of it. It just copied and pasted it onto a different uh, layer, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in transformation mode and I'm going to turn my letters like so. Oops, excuse me. I'm gonna just select that layer, transformation mode, and I'm gonna move like this. Then I can use those keys also, like this. I can use the arrow keys. You can move it a little bit where you want. You just want to have like a cool little crack in it like that. Okay, now I'm going to continue and do that with the E, the A, and the R, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm selected on that top layer. And draw around it like this. Really important that you get around it. Read that selection. And again, Control Shift J or Command Shift J if you're on the Mac. Then put it in transformation mode. And then I'm going to twist it up like this. So I get a like nice I'm twist it up. It's okay if it overlaps a little bit. Okay. Then I'm going to hit the check. And I'm going to repeat the same steps with the A and the R. I'm going to join those and then Control Shift J. And then transformation more control T, and then you move it up like so. Okay. And then you hit your check. Now you'll see in the layers panel that I have several different layers. And what we're going to want to do is come, we're going to merge all those layers. So we're going to hold the control, select a layer, and then hold the control button and highlight all those layers there. Okay. Every single one. Then we're going to right click and we're going to go to merge layers and you'll see now i have my font all broken like this okay now the cool thing is that i can put it in transformation and i can move it around like this i can make it a little bigger and center it like that okay now the cool part is adding those effects those filters okay okay so what we're going to do is we're going to add a spatter filter. Now, what we're going to do is we're not going to add it to the actual layer. We're going to add a layer mask. The layer mask is located right here on the bottom. It is that little square with the dot in the middle. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a layer mask. But before we do that, we have to select this whole uh, fear word. So we're going to hold control or command and click on that thumbnail. And you'll see I've selected everything there then I'm going to apply a layer mask. And you'll see what happens. Look at that layer mask. There is a complete opposite, okay? You have the background here, all right? It's black, that is a layer mask. And we're gonna apply that filter to that layer mask. So we're gonna go up to filter on the menu bar at the top, okay? And we're gonna go to filter gallery. Once we get to that filter gallery, we're gonna look for spatter. And I believe it is the second one. And there it is right here under brush strokes spatter. We're going to click it. And I'm going to go ahead and change the spatter to about 25. So I'm going to go to the spatter about 25. Or well, maybe a little less. You can play with it however you like it. I'm going to put it at 20. Okay. And then smooth this out 25. And you can see you have those little, you can mess with it. And you just hit OK. Okay. So it seems like it might need a little more. So let's go to back to the filter gallery. And I'm going to go to 25, like they said. Looks like a lot. Smoothness 10 and hit OK. And there we go. Oh, because of the layer mask. Right. So the layer mask kind of cuts it in and keeps it together. All right. So 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a stroke. We're going to add some layer styles. Okay. So first we're going to do and make sure that you're selected on that layer. We're going to add a stroke and a gradient. We're going to add a gradient stroke to that. So what we're going to do is we're going to the FX right down here. We're going to hit stroke. Okay. And then we're going to go to the file type. We're going to hit gradient, okay? And then we're going to click on that gradient editor, and we're going to select our colors. The way we do that is we go to these little guys right here. I'm going to go from red to white. I'm going to hit OK. And then you can do the size and the opacity. And you can change the scale of it, okay? I think they're linear. Which one are they doing? Well, they're doing a darker. Okay, so we can do that too. So we can do from here. We can go to a darker red. Okay. The scale. So, size, we can check with the size a little bit. There we go. There we go. And that's how we create. That's how we create our worn and broken text, just like so. So we have, um, you can play around with the size of the uh, gradient and all that. So go ahead and when you're done with it, you go ahead and turn it in. You're going to hit File, Save As. Save on your computer. And you're going to do make sure that it's titled Worn and Torn underscore and your initials. And you want to save that to your desktop. That way you can find it. You're going to hit Save and hit OK. And then you can turn it in. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.